So hi guys, uh, you know, we have a, a special guest today in our session. So usually I'm the one who will be talking to you today. I have you know, invited my one of my close friend. So you know, before I give an intro, he has been there in the markets for a very, very long time. I remember when, when I was studying first standard or second standard, he would have already completed his college degree back then. So he's very, very, you know, a senior in this industry. And uh, you know, before I came to know about him, I told Rakesh you know, Pujaria one time, like, you no, know, there was a session conducted by him online. This is precisely you known by 2016 end or start of 2017 January. I was looking for some resources in YouTube about algo trading. And uh, you no know, Rakesh Pujaria, he came to this session in an algo trading session and he was giving a presentation about his experience of doing a systemized trading during 2016 demonetization time. So that yes. was a black swan event time, I remember, because many people can get started into systemized trading or rule-based trading, but once you get into it, what the major, you know, uh, the worrisome factor is, what will I do when there is a black swan event? So he was precisely explaining how he was, you know, go through in that specific phase of demonetization, because I remember his system given a long signal in Nifty just before demonetization, and he was long. And next day, the market tanked. Like by 8 o'clock the previous day, night, the news was flashing, demotation news was flashing, and everybody was worrying what the market is going to do next day. And next day, to everybody's surprise, market tanked big time. It was a huge gap down. So remember, like person who's been there in the market for a long time, who have been following his systemized trading for a long time, he himself was not sure what needs to be done on that day. So, you know, there are some people who are working with him, we're suggesting you have to override your system because this is a one-time event, the black swan event one happens one in 100 years. But to his mind, it was saying you have to follow the system. But that day, I remember what happened was, even though he was going long, he closed the position manually interfering it when the gap down happens. He closed, you closed it, right, Rakesh? Yes. You closed it. And then you went short also and market reversed and it went up and then again you went long. So that day, if he had not intervened with his system, definitely it would have been a profitable trade. Yes. But because he has intervened, so because okay. he has intervened, it ended up you no know, making a huge loss. So that specific session, which happened in 2017, almost seven years before, it is still there in my mind. So whenever I meet Rakesh in any of the events, this is the one thing that I tell him because many people think that systemized trading is easy, but it is not as easy as it looks when you start trading live. That too, when you know go through these kind of sessions, I mean, these kind of more knowing events. So thank you so much for your uh, know, time, Rakesh, coming to you know this podcast, you know, willing to share your knowledge here. So definitely this session is going to be really helpful. So please, for the next you know 40 or 50 minutes, what are you doing? Put on hold, sit here, put your headset and listen to what he's going to talk about. So Thank welcome you. to the session, uh, Rakesh Ji. It's over Thank to you. Thanks. Thanks, Kari Bakaran, for having me. And uh, this is a session uh, long overdue. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I... Uh, I'm really happy that you got inspired by that presentation. That day we had a slippage of 3% on the capital. Okay. Because okay. I interfered. If I had not interfered, probably uh, we would be up by 3%. We ended the day flat. But if I had not interfered, we would have ended the day at 3% plus. All right. So this, is, uh, this is the myth that uh, algo trading uh, does not have emotions. Yet it does have emotions. But it systemizes the process. Most of the things like you can be rule-based and... Uh, and your executions are kind of, uh, you can precisely execute whatever you're thinking. But at the end of the day, there is a human behind algo, right? Who is deciding all that. So yeah, emotions do come into play. But with experience, all this will go. Like uh, today, my interfer interference rate is almost reduced to less than a percent times. Less than half percent times where there are extraordinary times we might have to interfere still. Right, but we right. don't interfere anymore. That so is true. We, we take whatever losses or profits comes our way and uh, we take it in the stride and that is how it should be. Correct, correct. So Rakesh, you, you started trading you know, like long, long back and you would have seen multiple different crashes like 2000, I mean 1999 dot-com bubble burst you would have seen, again 2008 crash you would have seen, again 2020 crash you would have seen. So over these many years which you have witnessed in general, so what is something that has changed now and what is something that has not changed now? What is your observation over these many years witnessing the crash beforehand in the markets? So, uh, before before this current era, uh, uh, social media was not prevalent that much. Like, it was the early days for social medias and 
there was some information asymmetry like uh, retailers used to get the information very last so right. that is not the that is not the case anymore so the actions and reactions are happening in real time the moment something is uh, out in the market it's on the whatsapp it's on the instagram it's in the youtube the very same second so in probably institutions which had this in information asymmetry uh, advantage uh, are, are are no longer having that advantage and uh, markets are reacting to the informations and news very very quickly like uh, earlier we, we used to have enough time to analyze and plan our trade and then do our trade and all that but nowadays like uh, information comes and you have to execute your trade the the same moment otherwise uh, you're very late in the game so the cycles of uh, rise and falls are uh, kind of uh, reducing in terms of time the uh, actions and reactions are happening in a very very short period of time and uh, and your reaction time also has to be uh, very very yeah short. correct that is because i have literally seen i started trading in 2008 when the you know crash started happening and whenever you know during maybe 15 or 20 years before when there is a kind of bear market that happens it takes at least you know 15 to 18 months to recover from that zone yes like 2008 same thing 2001 same thing but 2020 when you see the you know the you know the significant crash that happened it was market was so quick to revert back and you no know, erased all the gains and recovered from those you know bigger losses so the kind as you correctly said the information that is spreading out is much faster now and people are reacting much faster now so mm-hmm. we might not see we might see you know a brutal crash but eventually that would be recovered much much faster so that is the kind of change that has happened over the period. and people are also becoming very smarter so they are acting very fast and real time so even your reaction time has to be really really real time you cannot afford to have that uh, uh, i remember a lot of fundamental analysts used to have 3 4 5 6 months kind of research before they actually put out a buy recommendation <laughs> but nowadays like the idea comes to their mind and the price has already moved and by the time the research report is over the movie is over So, uh, that, that is, true, that is that the era we are living in. That is true. So, uh, Rakesh, you have started this systemized trading long back. Now, people are saying algo trading and algo trading. You would have started algo trading long back, right? So, you know, how did you start getting into systemized trading when the resources are very, very minimal? Now, if you wanted to learn something, you can go and search it in YouTube. You have it in Hindi, you have it in Tamil, you have it in Telugu, in any kind of regional languages. You have resources to learn. but back then when you want to get into systemized trading which is not at all popular in india how did you start getting into it what was the process that you followed so uh, it it started with uh, with the phenomena that uh, discretionary trading started struggling post 2008 with post 2009 and uh, our revenues were dependent on those traders so as a person who is heading the organization uh, i was faced with this problem if earlier my 90% of my traders were profitable now my 90% traders are non profitable because of the environment that has changed that uh, that puts me on the part of something called systematic trading let's let's not depend on uh, the traders anymore we should have alpha generating ideas and we should have a mechanism of discipline and rule based trading and that is where the idea happened to me in 2012 13 and that is where i started long shots first on long shot long shot futures and uh, we had a very very uh, good run on long shot futures on uh, scripts like unitech and jpsu high beta stocks and uh, arcom and reliance and so and all that But what i realized is like uh, whenever there is a bull market you make good money but uh, once market goes into sideways consolidation and you you lose most of it and uh, a bore period of 3 4 years starts and uh, bear market you're not even to uh, Uh, able to capitalize so you want to play the both side of the market that was the idea you just don't want to be in the bull market idea is to make money every year so that is what i call all generating all weather returns and that is where the idea of long shot came we started with long shot futures then we started uh, in slow, uh, first we started with stocks then i we went to indices uh, now we are into options as well so it's 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 quite 12 13 years of journey and a uh, lot of learnings lot of mistakes a uh, lot of crystallization and uh, now products are being uh, kind of fine tuned and still we are evolving every day because with with the advent of zero days to expiry the game is, game is again changed so it's it's not that you find something it will work for your life you will have to constantly evolve 
do your research and uh, understand keep your uh, ears close to the ground uh, what is happening in the market and what kind of regime you are into are, are there are there any regime changes and you need to react to those regime changes and while doing all these long shots and options you must understand this is a leverage game and uh, you should have your absolutely watertight risk management in place so that you don't blow up on your capital at the same time uh, you take advantage of the leverage and enhance your return you're not audible uh... sorry i was on mute yeah, yeah so what i was saying is as you rightly mentioned like you know you have to keep adapting to the market environments keep adapting to the market regimes and so over the periods like you have been into the markets for so long so there were multiple different regimes that has happened different changes that has happened in the markets like i remember during uh, you know when uh, chidambaram was a finance minister i think he increased stt or some transaction charges he increased it i think so during that time market reacted very badly but you no know, and also there was some ban on t notes or something which was related to you know securities 2006. market 2006 yeah i remember so when such kind of events happens which we are not you no know, used to it like any new traders are not used to it. suppose if same thing happens like what was your you know um, reaction during that time how you were managing as a group of traders you were there during that time right so whenever But, there was a news related to you no know, affecting the overall broking industry in general or overall stock market in general how was the overall you no know, reaction at that time how did you manage you know during that time do you remember those period so i i clearly remember though that we not banned because markets were very bullish a day before and we were loaded with the positions on the long side because we are momentum traders that time so we whenever market is good we used to load up a lot of stocks and btst used to happen on a very large scale that time and suddenly this evening news came and uh, like we had early morning meeting with the traders and we just discussed that whatever be the losses we can book not an issue uh, it, it's not going to end up our life it might actually take up take away some one quarter or two quarter of our profits but let's not panic and uh, take it as it comes and it so happened that market opened and closed immediately and we could not sell anything <laughs> we could not sell anything and then during uh, there was a break a circuit break and uh, there was a break of one hour and we had a meeting once more one more time okay, now it's now nothing is nothing is in our hand so markets are closed and in between the announcement can they are reconsidering oh. their uh, and uh, fortunately we were saved and uh, during those uh, break of one hours uh, market again uh, came back to the normal levels and uh, that that day we were actually saved because we we did we could not execute our trade in time so sometimes uh, sometimes being fast is not always profitable <laughs> so sometimes being little little late in reaction can also be profitable and that was the day we understood that and uh, it's important to hold your nose when something happens like this and uh, uh, it's a game of survival so every time a thought comes to my mind that uh, we need to survive this day and we should remain alive for the next day market gives you adequate opportunity to recover losses at the same time make significant profits so being on the pitch is important right like uh, there will be times where ball is swinging and you are not able to play it properly and uh, and uh, ball is not coming into your bat but there will be times where juicy full tosses will come and you'll be able right. to hit out of the park so you have to wait for your uh, right uh, environment environment is very important and reading of that environment is uh, very very important and that comes with an experience spending time in the market so yeah there are times where uh, there were panicking times but we managed it well and uh, we have a track record of many making money in uh, crisis all the time so that that kind of helps and uh, yes of course you have to be very very vigilant and keep a close eye on the market all the time so true true, true. and one more uh, thing rakesh which you know you are the right person to hand you know, answer this see uh, you know the mindset that you need to have as a successful trader versus the mindset that you need to have as a successful fund manager both are two different ball games all together absolutely yeah, no i i would always say a successful trader might not be the best fund manager because the kind so you know the overall uh, you know the pressure that you would face as a you no know, as a guy who is managing your own funds 
versus a guy who's managing other people's funds is very, very, way, way different. People tend to think, okay, it is always other people's money. What said you can easily manage it? No, it is not at all easy. Absolutely. So, so you have been into this industry where you have seen yourself as a trader versus you have seen yourself as a people who's managing a group of traders and also, you know, a guy who's, you know, managing a decent funds as per the SEBI registered investment advisor also. So, what is the kind of mindset a guy who is you know, trying to get into this industry of being you know, a fund managing industry? So, what is the thought process that he should have? What is the mindset that he should have? So, it's a different ball game when you advise people on their assets. Uh, more often than not, uh, it's a game of expectations management and uh, you end up being counselled to the <laughs> uh, <laughs> investors most of the time because uh, uh, they will try and uh, probably... Uh, uh, kind of uh, their emotions will uh, get into play when you are uh, advising their funds because when whenever it is your trade uh, you know what is the loss and what is the profit and when you want to get out and all but when it is somebody else's money you need to be very vigilant and that is why we have put up this uh, process oriented uh, organization where we do everything rule based model based and quantitative and technical parameter based so so even my discretion does not interfere with the emotions of uh, my own uh, judgment and uh, client's emotions as well but at the same time client will uh, go through those uh, gyrations of emotions ups and downs fear and greed and and it, as a fund manager or as a fund advisor it's your duty to calm them down uh, in the times of panic and make them understand with data so one thing I've understood that if you talk, if you uh, explain people with data, they have a helicopter view of what is happening, and uh, probably that can that can actually put things in right perspective. And uh, that is why we have uh, we are following this data driven approach all the time. And today also we'll show some data which will definitely help our uh, viewers uh, start the if, start the journey in equity if they have not already started. And yeah. if they've already started, stay the course and why they should be in equity all the time. Uh, there are some interesting data we have we, uh, as, the, as the conversation progress, we'll show, share those slides as well. Yes, Rakesh. So, you know, as, uh, uh, during the beginning of this session, you know, when we are having a conversation, I was saying like, you know, our generation versus the previous generation versus the current generation. What the overall shift that is happening is, for an example, you know, my parents where their main expectation was to invest in land, maybe some you know, 30 or 40 years before. That is what their parents would have said. Invest in lands, you will not lose any money. But now the you know the shift you know, totally starts shifting from the real estate to equity. More people started investing in SAPs and everything. More people started considering because we might not see the real estate appreciation just like during our parents' age. We might not see the same kind of appreciation. And also, the liquidity is so poor. Once you get invested in any of the real estate, if you wanted to exit it, you might not be able to exit the right time because of poor liquidity where you might not get the right price which you're looking for. So there is always some issues with respect to you know, a liquid asset versus a non-liquid asset. So you, know, you said that you have certain data which states you know, clearly that over the long run, over the long run, it's not just 10 years or 20 years, you have a significant years of data which shows how equity investing is really good. So I'll share, uh, I mean, I'll make you as an ask. Can you share that information? Yeah, so definitely. That I'll, I'll share it. Allow me to share the screen and... Yeah, you can try now. No, hey, uh, let, me, let me try now. Okay. Okay. I, yes, I can now. Yeah, definitely. So uh, now you can see my screen, Kiro. You can see the screen? Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, let, it's a long presentation, but I'll go to the uh, first of all. This this slide is very important, Kiruba. Like, uh, uh, what is the power of compounding? Like, right? if you uh, this slide suggests that if you compound one one person three sixty five times, maybe daily or maybe weekly or maybe monthly or maybe quarterly or maybe yearly. If you just add one person every period. Then after 365 period, your capital can be 37.8 times, right? But at the same time, if you lose one person, 365 period, your capital can be actually three paisa. So this is the power of uh, adding every single basis points of alpha to your uh, investment. And this is uh, the difference between the two is 1200 times. Okay, 37.8 divided yeah. by 0.03 is 1200. So that is that is what we always keep on emphasizing that people should focus on. Uh, enhancing their return all the time, keeping a close eye on the, eye on the risk. There is one more slide that I, I, I've started sharing with people of late is 
uh, this one. Uh, this is the slide I am talking about where uh, this is the 217 years of data. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. Inflation adjusted return of different asset class, stocks, bonds, bills, gold, and US dollars. Okay, if you're just holding US dollar in your cupboard for 217 years, the current value of US dollar is only four, four cents to a dollar. Right. So holding case is the most, uh, most criminal thing one can do to their own purchasing power. <laughs> but if you hold gold, then your wealth is 3.64 times. So, which essentially says that gold is able to match inflation most of the times and outperform a little bit over, over and above inflation. Uh, you are able to bid, but if you are invested in government government bonds, probably you will you are two sixty four times. And uh, uh, if you are into private bonds, your capital is one hundred and seventeen one seven four six times. Okay, that is what the slide is saying. But what if you are in stocks during this period? Hereby your capital is one point six million dollars. Wow. Inflation adjust and okay. uh, inflation adjusted is the key word. Suppose your return is ten percent and inflation is suppose six percent. Then right. the real return is only 4%. Right. So this is the real return after adjusting for inflation. And this is the 217 years of record, which says stock has delivered 6.8% after inflation. And bonds has delivered 3.5%. Bills have delivered 2.6%. Gold has delivered 0.6%. And US dollar has delivered negative 1.4%. And real estate actually matches the inflation. It's near to the gold, around... The, it's not right. in this slide, but I have data which says that real estate has delivered around 9% over a period of last 20 years. And they generally match inflation and deliver a couple of percentage above that. So uh, a difference of 3.5%, 3% you know, is resulting into this kind of widening gap as the time passes. That is why uh, it's important that we remain invested in the stocks and uh, it delivers a uh, very, very superior return. But at the same time, like, like this is a 20-year slide of, uh, again, asset class returns of uh, last 20 years. India stocks has delivered around 17%. U.S. stocks has delivered around 12%. Gold has delivered 12%. Real estate has delivered 9%. The much hyped real estate has delivered only 9%. Right, and right. debt has delivered 7.2%. So this is the kind of alpha you're looking at where uh, over a period of time it helps uh, to compound your capital. But one important caveat, market does not move in linearity. Okay? It does not go up all the time. There are times where market does nothing. This is Indian market. Okay, And there are patches of, say, 11 years here, right, from 1991 to 2001, 2003, where market did nothing. And, and there was suddenly 5x growth in four and a half years from here to here. Okay, And right. suddenly market did nothing for another five and a half year after that. And this all this gain were given up in post-COVID era. So actually market were here post-COVID again. So six years of gain given up. But markets are on rise currently after that. So there are patches of non-performance where market does nothing. And there are patches where market goes parabolic like this. It's important that we actually be in the market all the time and uh, try and take advantage of that this. That is true. This is the, this is the point this I want of to drive. Yeah, this yes. is very, very important uh, slide, Rakesh, because more people always see when we see, okay, it is getting 20% returns, 25% returns over the long run, it is always filled with period when there are no returns. Because when you see no returns, the first thing they will say is, well, if I invested in FD, I would have gotten good returns. See, I'm investing in... Yes, so there is always a recency bias, you know, where, Correct. when the recent period is not delivered return. Then as a fund manager or as a fund advisor, you face a challenging time convincing people to stay with the equities because it delivers in the long run. And uh, yeah, it's a definitely a challenge. One more slide I want to share, uh, Kiruba, is uh, this, where uh, uh, th there is some seasonality involved. Mm -hmm. This is a slide by my dear friend Rahul Pajapati from Concept. So I've given credit to him. From every bottom, like from every rise, the market crashes, say 40, 50, 60 percent. And from that bottom, market rises six times. Oh, okay. This is seasonality. So if you go, this is a nifty chart. If you go to Sensex chart also, okay. so like uh, in 1989, 90 bottom, market rose to uh, rose by six times in 
1994 okay and then it corrected and it did nothing for many years and then again from 19 uh, 2001 it rose six times and from 2008 it again rose six times now post covid market actually bottomed at seven times in 500 so this decade probably uh, you're looking If the seasonality re- uh, repeats, then you're looking at forty-five thousand by two thousand thirty. That is what the seasonality is suggesting. So it, it won't happen in a linearity. It will happen. It, it will have its fair fair share of like ups and downs. Like this six six times is uh, looking very good in hindsight, but you see the kind of gyration that you know ups and downs and ups and downs and again up and then finally give up and then six times from here will be around forty-five thousand. So these are the right. three four important slides I wanted to share. and uh, we can take up conversation uh, further yeah that is uh, no very uh, nice slide uh, rakesh because no even i have not seen that uh, usually we you no know, check those past historical data sets but as you have rightly said from 2020 if it is six times of jump that we could expect then it is all the way to you know 45000 yes we are years. still at say 22000 and uh, suppose market reaches 45000 from here then you are doubling And you are looking at say 2030, so seven years of doubling. So around, it, it's a simple CAGR of 13%. It's not right. it's not high kind of right, a, right, right, CAGR right. that you are looking at, which which six seven eight percent kind of GDP growth. And say you apply one and a half percent, one and a half times of that growth to EPS. So there is a fundamental argument also to this, Correct. like why markets Correct. should be rising in next seven eight ten years because of the clear sheer momentum that. Uh, Uh, economy has, and uh, we are fortunate uh, to live in a country where most of the growth gets converted into earnings. That is true. That is very true because it is not and just the normal bull run. Because as you rightly mentioned, you are you know, literally seeing everything that is happening in the country. You know, with respect to economy, wise, even if you go and you know, roam around India from Kanyakumari to Kashmir, if you talk to all the small scale business people. If someone wanted to do some business, maybe some twenty years before, versus someone who wants to start business right now, the kind of approvals that he has to go through during earlier times now it is much much faster. Like you no, know, there is a significant difference, and everything is digitized now, starting from passport approval to everything. So you no, know, whatever the run that you are seeing is actually getting you no, know, I mean, reflected through the economic factors. So whenever the whenever. Uh, Earnings rise and economy rise. There are two factors which Ray Dalio always talks about. He talks about one is productivity, another is leverage. So any growth is a it's a combination of both. And currently, uh, both the both the factors are present, like productivity right. improvement through digital transformation that India has seen, and uh, sensible lending uh, leverage is also happening. So all this combined together. and with the advent of ai for the productivity will increase so we are looking at a very very upward, upward trajectory and to my mind we are right here at the cusp of next three decade of growth with china was there in 1980 right. 1982 so 1982 to th- three decades china economy went from 4 4 trillion to 17 18 trillion that is what we are looking at and uh, even on a per capita basis like our income is around 2700 Which is expected to rise to the ten thousand dollars and twelve thousand dollars in next ten fifteen years. That is where you will see an explosive rise uh, in stock market. Of course, there will be a time when market will enter a bubble, uh, bubble scenario, and uh, but the times are far off. They are they are not yet here. So I don't think there is any need to be afraid at this hour. And, yeah, uh, we will definitely you, keep conversing will... when the bubble happens. We'll have another <laughs> session. Uh, uh, yeah. and moreover no there is some interesting economic data which i have read from uh, no rbi or some other uh, no organization which is published stating that india which is currently right now till you no know, maybe in the next couple of years is where the peak economic activity will be witnessed by india because the majority of working population between the age of 25 to 35 across the world the number of people between this age will be significantly higher in india compared to the rest of the world so which means that the economy activity contributed between the people of 25 to 35 the most working professionals will be much much higher to rest of the indias which in turn we can witness it maybe in the next couple of years through the economic activity what you are saying is correct uh, there is a there is a data which suggests that uh, you know what is the current age of india current age of india average age of indian population is around 27 years okay, okay. and economy goes through roof when 
uh, average population is between 27 and 40. That is what, and then beyond 40, it starts saturating. So, right. uh, we're not going to uh, be as yet 40 years in the next 10, 15 years at least. So, that is that is the theory where everybody, uh, top-down approach uh, is suggesting that, that we should have an explosive growth in economy and earning. And fortunately, we have a very, very robust uh, stock market system here, which, which is a discounting machine. And right. a lot many new businesses will come up, small cap will become large caps, and a lot of new business will also come, startup culture is also there. So, there, is, there are a lot, lot of low-hanging fruits currently. That is true, that is true. And um, uh, Rakesh, one more thing is, See, with respect to the kind of analysis that we do with respect to markets earlier versus now, for an example, early, consider during this Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger era, where they'll dig deep about the company's business factors, they'll read about the financial PL statements and everything, and then finally they'll decide, okay, this is a good company to invest in. The, all those analysis factors will be, you know, considering those balance sheets, PL, inclusive of the man, studying about the management, or who the company is running, everything. And finally, they'll invest in it. And slowly, the shift has started towards a quantitative factor where forget about the business and everything. When you approach the whole ecosystem with respect to all the stocks in general through quantitative factor, then it helps you to decide which stocks to you know, short, which stocks to go long. So all those momentum factors becomes much easier. If you consider the quant mutual fund, which you know actually which was you know, bought the escorts mutual fund and became a quant fund by Sandip. By two, start of 2019 or 2020, their overall AUM was only 400 crores. And now, the overall AUM of Quant Mutual Fund is more than 40,000 crores. It's so more it than 50,000 crores. Yeah, it's now more than 50,000 crores. Yeah. So that you can clearly see what is the power of quantitative approach. As you rightly said, when you're a fund manager and when your overall approach has to be, you know, through this quantitative nature, it becomes much easier because there is no discretionary involved. You just have to follow the process. And you just have to ensure this process is clearly defined to your investors so that they'll stick to it. So this is a, you know, a very good example of the power of quantitative investing yes. or approach towards trading through quantitative in nature. So uh, with respect to your small case, um, Rakesh, which you know the compounding wealth advisors which you have been running. So yes. what is the major core principles behind you know, those small cases which you are running? So we, we, we realized much earlier that uh, fundamental analysis is basically crystal ball gazing where we are trying to gauge into the future and discount in present and then probably arrive at some conclusion and then take an action in market. But then uh, your, if your hypothesis is not working, there is no fail-safe mechanism. Okay, At what point you decide like you've gone wrong? So for us, a uh, single factor that we track is price and all other parameters are derived from price. Whatever quantitative analysis we do, what a trend analysis, momentum analysis, relative strength analysis, these are the kind of thing that we do. And uh, we are definitely following the path of fund mutual fund in terms of philosophy. Uh, of course, we are advisories and uh, they are mutual funds. There is a difference. But in terms of performance and in terms of uh, thought process, I think uh, we, are, uh, we are matching them. All, all the time and uh, believe me, this is just the beginning. 50,000 crore is nothing. The total long only market uh, is around 50 lakh crore currently, including debt and equity, out of which 25 lakh crore is in equity. And uh, this market in the next 10 to 15 years is going to rise to 200 lakh crore. So you're looking at four times of the market and uh, equity allocation is going to increase. So in the next probably next 10 to 15 years, you're looking at 120 lakh crore market which you'll be advising or maybe you'll be managing through mutual fund or PMS or small. That is where the small case comes into play. And uh, uh, since we are ex absolutely algorithm based and quantitative based, uh, we could launch it uh, last year on 22nd March 2023. And uh, the service is available to the smaller investor as well because uh, with PMS, uh, there is a limitation of say 50 lakh capital. But with small case, you can start with 2 lakh, 3 lakh, 5 lakhs and all that. That is what the democratization is happening. The bottom of the pyramid, people are getting the right advisors. And uh, that is where our role comes into play to educate them, to make them understand the power of equity and make them rule-based, not do some random speculation. Because when somebody is influenced by rising market, they actually start indulging into speculation, short-term trading and all that. That is what one, that is not we are advising. We are advising the long-term investment and all our algorithms are based on long-term investment principles. The average winner size, uh, winner duration for our uh, six algorithms that we have, uh, six portfolio that we have listed on small case is 365 days, Kiruba. Oh, average okay. duration. 
of winners and average duration of loser is 300 days so we without very uh, losers very fast the short term losses and long term gains and your portfolio over a period of time will only be consisting of winners so we have inculcated some certain time tested principles like ride your winners and cut your losers i have a risk management in place through allocation to a particular stock cannot uh, increase beyond a certain point that is what we do at the time of uh, initiation as well and uh, uh, believe me investors are really happy last 11 months have been a kind of a dream run for us in terms of performance also and uh, uh, we are happy so, that all the investors uh, rakesh ji can you share your overall uh, you know the list of small cases which is there in uh, you know yes. listed in small cases and what is the overall yes, live returns so I, that is i'll i'll share that so yeah so uh, people should go to this site called cwa.smallcase that is a micro site that is where you will see me uh, rakesh pujara is my uh, name right and these are my six portfolios okay i am not able to but, see your screen okay can you okay share I'll, i'll share the screen first okay yeah okay. now you able to see this yes yes so you go to this website for cwa.smallcase.com that is where our portfolios are listed okay there are six portfolios uh, first portfolio is cwa average stand which has delivered uh, around 101% return in 11 months and uh, second portfolio is uh, cwa all caps 35 which has delivered around say 96% uh, third portfolio is uh, cwa mil 25 which has delivered 80 80% and uh, fourth is cwa multi cap momentum gladiator 72.66 and even our large cap has delivered more than 40% return in last 11 months and uh, the last one uh, cwa fantastic 50 has delivered 63 so these are the six portfolios uh, that we have listed on uh, small case and uh, our website is cwa.smallcase.com where you can actually go and subscribe also and uh, when you uh, actually uh, Uh, press the subscribe button it will link to your broker automatically and uh, it will ask you to invest some and whatever sum you want to invest it will automatically replicate the portfolio that we are uh, creating out of this advisory and it's very very convenient and it's very cost efficient as well uh, we generally charge only 1000 uh, rupees per month plus taxes and uh, there are six monthly plan there are three monthly plan and all that you can always explore that so this is what it is and uh, So Rakesh, with respect to you know you uh, this overall portfolio which is there in small case, so when the yeah. core principle is totally based on momentum, and you know we are say suppose our aim is to beat the index in the long run, whether it is small cap, yeah. mid cap, or large cap, those risk if we have invested in those stocks belongs to small cap. If small cap is giving thirty percent, we you know our uh, portfolio might be much higher than that. But when we get into a bear phase, like in two thousand twenty or two thousand eight, you no, know, th- during those period when the market goes down drastically, so there are two, you know, issues that primarily we face. One is the liquidity factor, where the small case or micro cap stocks will have circuit filters, which we might not be able to exit at the right time. That is one thing. So, and second thing is the kind of drawdown that you might face with respect to momentum, uh, you know, in general, is much higher. so uh, what would be the expected drawdown if someone is investing in these kind of portfolios so we have done analysis since 2011 like what an etf suppose you are holding holding etf since 2011 12 what would be your average return and what would be your drawdown suppose you are holding good equity mutual funds what will be your return and what will be your drawdown and suppose you are a good stock picker discretionary stock picker what would be your uh, return and what would be your drawdown vis a vis what would be our return during the similar period and what would be our drawdown of the combined six small cases that is the analysis we have done and again uh, probably i'll share the screen that will things put in uh, put in perspective and uh, yeah uh, definitely the invest interesting conversation that is going on kiru and i'm really excited so this yeah. is this is a nifty buy and hold approach uh, if you are just holding some etfs okay so you would have generated uh, approximately 13% uh, before dividend and uh, you would have drawdown 39% in 2020 okay right that gives you a calmer of around 0.3 but suppose you are a good mutual fund picker which invest in equity so we have taken 
most performing mutual fund of same period you would have probably end up making around 19% and your drawdown will still be around 34% okay so we uh, whenever we analyze we analyze with data and we talk with data always so suppose you are a good stock picker and uh, you have only multi bagger in your stocks by by any chance still you will have made around 27% okay and, and your return your drawdown would be around in the vicinity of 45% so right right these are the three approaches either you can go through etf you can go through mutual fund equity mutual funds or you can uh, pick your stocks directly or go through pms or something so this is what we analyze across uh, three categories and we compared it with one of our small cases okay this is one of our small cases you can you can see what is the difference the difference not in no not only in return but also in drawdown so that right. gives you a calmer of 1.56 so Right, so that small case is uh, what is the name of that small case which uh, CWA shown? Multi Cap uh, Momentum Gladiator. I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll just do one second. I'll, uh, I'll show you the slide again, probably. Yeah. Yeah, it's CWA Multi Cap Momentum Gladiators, okay. and I have a back testing of all six small cases also. Uh, I'll show, share that as well. Sure, and sure, sure. So you are clearly seeing your karma has improved from 0.3 to 1.56. Right. And, and right. Uh, now you will ask how we are able to control drawdown. I'll I'll come to that point, and how we are able to improve returns. There is one more slide which should help you that. I'll just go to that slide first. This is yeah. this is the individual back test of all the small cases. Okay. 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 So like like uh, uh, all cap thirty five forty one percent twenty six percent ten. So everything is 30, having a calmer of greater than one. Yeah, yeah. And all, yeah. Okay, uh, to have a calmer greater than one in investment is really really good. That's true. That's true. Okay. And if you what if what happens if you subscribe to all these six and combine it? Okay. Okay. So this is what the statistics are. Okay. You see the drawdown has reduced to twenty percent. And that that right. has happened because of the diversification, because right. of some uh, entries are uh, designed early entries, some some entries are designed late entries, some exits are designed late, some exits are designed early. If you combine all the all the six, then probably your drawdown is limited to only twenty percent even during two thousand twenty. Right. So that that is how we are able to add value, uh, and why this happens. You see the exposure, uh, Kiruba. We are exposed in the market only sixty-eight percent of the time. Oh, okay. So thirty-two per thirty-two percent of the time, you are actually sitting on cash. Oh, okay. That will earn you liquid returns. So that is where the outperformance comes from. Where a lot of people have a limitation uh, of not raising cash enough. Uh, a lot of uh, discretionary dilemma that happens when the market goes down, whether we should exit now or not. But since our approach is rule-based, we get an exit at the appropriate time. And that that is that is why the all the all the data you see uh, is improving. The calmer of one and a half, uh, CAGR of thirty one, uh, right. average of thirty 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 one again. The most important thing is two two things in my mind. This twenty percent drawdown. So when your pole position is eighty and not sixty, when the market goes down, right? If your drawdown is twenty, your pole position will be eighty, right? Right. Suppose you drawdown forty percent, then your pole position is sixty when the market rises. Right. So when your pole position is at eighty, probably you are likely to outperform. That is what right. the philosophy we are following. And uh, since uh, since you are also a data driven guy, I, I'm sure you will love all this data. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can get that. I can get that. So Rakesh, so uh, with respect to options trading, so you've been you've been doing options as well, right? So what is the kind of approach that you follow with respect to options trading, and specifically after the you know the daily expiries, which is happening from Monday to Friday? So, what was the approach you followed earlier versus what is the approach that you are currently following? So uh, earlier, were a lot of things we used to do three days before the expiry, two days before the expiry, one days before the expiry. But now, uh, with uh, every day, uh, almost every day expiry, uh, what changes we have made? Uh, we have in incorporated more strategies for diversifications. We are more trading more on expiry days because uh, that is where the edge is more than compared to non-expiry days. But gamma is also exploding. 
on experiment right. if that is resulting into spikes and all so uh, to take care of spikes we are always hedged uh, with wings out of the money options is always there and there is nothing uh, risk undefined uh, we have introduced uh, portfolio level stop losses as well and we have introduced uh, target based uh, approach as well so when during the day suppose your risk is uh, say 1 1.5% and your reward is only 0.20 that is what that is where you want to take the money off the table so we have improved all this and uh, these things cannot be back tested because zero days to expiry is very recently but right uh, as a hunch we know this will definitely improve our age and uh, uh yes of course there are a lot of strategies in, in the production also and uh, we are using almost 150 strategy across uh, various instruments uh, the idea behind uh, using so many strategies is as you know we we believe in uh, non correlated strategies and diversification and hedging these are the three core principle through which we manage the risk and leverage is something that gives you return so these are the core principles which we are using and uh, yes of course option returns have tapered compared to 2020 21 and 22 but fortunately god has been kind uh, still our books are positive for 2023 and uh, current year is also very uh, good, good okay, okay is kind of year but now the walls have come to around 15 14 and a half 15 kind of level so we are expecting a very good year for 2024 being an election year uh, walls will rise premium will have a juicy premium but uh, our focus on in option is to generate additional return over and above equities so uh, we are not taking very high concentrated bet there we are trying to have some income generating strategies when even if you generate 15 18% per annum we are happy with that and uh, that is a plus return over and above equity that we try and generate for our clients and uh, yeah that should be the approach because uh, lot, uh, if you try for very very high returns then your drawdown also goes out of the roof and that is where you yeah. feel jittery So, True. multiple non-correlated strategies, combination of directional, non-directional, diversification across instruments, uh, across time frames, and uh, indicator-based approach, time-based approach, various uh, directional option selling, directional so, option. Yeah, buying, so it's kind of a totally a multiple uncorrelated strategy. That that is where the, the the chances of survival are there. And uh, correct. Uh, you diversify so much that uh, no single strategy makes money no single single strategy breaks your money so that is how that is what the approach is got it got it so uh, rakesh uh, no one final question before we wind up see uh, no you are a system i trader and not only system i trader you are a system i used to know investor as well so a discretionary trader versus a non discretionary trader like us the major difference is we spend so much of time on analyzing you know the historical data to come up with a trading system or you know investing system but once that is done our work is over and we have to be you know disciplined enough to just follow the system right so the main issue that most people who are totally new to systemized trading what i have observed is once you create a system all you have to do is follow the system right but once a system gives you buy signal you have to trade it once a signal gives you a sell signal you have to sell it but in order to wait for the signal is something which most people don't get it like they always wanted to do something doing nothing is also a kind of work for a systemized trader right so, so how do you get you know avoid this urge of doing nothing and sticking how do you get this discipline of sticking to the system so it's a journey right like doing nothing is also a position that right? no position is also a position like uh, <laughs> as i explained earlier 32% of the time we are sitting on cash right so that kind of improves alpha So doing nothing is is more more to do with your personality development, your psychology development. Cult it is basically cultivation. For example, a uh, lot of people like thumbs up, okay, as a cold drink. But a lot of people dislike it. But when when they drink it for the first time, they don't like it. Then then drink it for the second time. Oh yeah, it might be good. And then they acquire taste over a period of time. So even any activity, something like you don't go from one hundred percent activity to zero percent uh, activity. over a period of time you reduce it like how we have done in our life when i used to be an active trader now absolutely no action during market hours just managing the rest just looking at what is happening with the market and just just keeping a close eye on the market no screen time nothing but uh, major difference between a discretionary trader and systematic trader is that the chances of success in discretionary trader to my mind percentage of 
successful trader in discretionary is very very less compared to systematic trader so systematic trader offers you that high probability of success that is what uh, attracts me and uh, even people with average iq can make money there but uh, in discretionary trading uh, you need a sharp eye and good memory yeah, calculations and good hunch and constant practice and constant screen time and constant news flow tracking and all that so to each his own of course whatever works for them with discretionary trader i what i've seen if it works for them it works big time they make huge money if it doesn't work for them like they struggle for decades and they right. lose all the capital and so uh, when discretionary trader comes for an interview or when they come into limelight it, actually there is a survivorship bias there are a lot of right. people who have not survived like a famous experiment uh, richard dennis and eckhart yeah, yeah i know yeah total traders Dennis. so uh, they came to the conclusion like even an engineer or a doctor or a peon or somebody else if they are trained to do something systematically they will produce good results and chances of success a trader can be trained that is that was that was was the conclusion so it's not a, no, it's not about you being a prodigy prodigy or you being a naturally talented trader which is right. the advantage people can be trained that right. is the greatest advantage and chances of success to my mind are higher in systematic investment and trading and that is where it attracts me and uh, that is that is the path i am following and i am recommending people to follow that path very true very true rakesh and even that was the precise reason i also you know started getting into systemic trading almost some you no know, 10 years before mainly because more than the profits more than the success and everything if there is one thing a systematic you no know, approach has given me is time like that is something which i value the most compared to being a profitable trader because once you get enough time you would be really able to do whatever things that you wanted to do in your life you can travel you can read books you know if there are any other activity beyond trading you can just still explore that absolutely so absolutely. so because all you have to do is just follow the system so when you have to follow the system you have to you know come up with the discipline that will automatically come in all together then you will all of a sudden you will realize you are getting so much of time just you no know, doing nothing just following the system and once you get that time in control then everything becomes you know much easier in your life because if you don't have that in your control then everything becomes very very stressed even that is the biggest reason as you rightly said discretionary traders are profitable traders systematic traders are profitable traders both are profitable but at what cost systematic you know being a discretionary trader you have to keep taking multiple decisions throughout your you know journey of your trading so that becomes much harder only for few people it becomes easier so there is there is a concept called uh, return per unit of stress <laughs> yeah <laughs> so returns are important but at the same time what kind of stress we go through to generate Correct. returns are very important true, 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 and true. with money comes financial freedom but how that money is earned right uh, very true if you occupy it through your entire day it, whether it deprives you of your family time or work life balance i think a systematic trader investor like our our small cases are all weekend short small cases friday after market gets over we analyze data make a portfolio and give suggestions to our client on the portfolio so it yeah. is a half an hour job every weekend just to analyze the stocks and at a click of the button we are analyzing 1500 listed stocks which right. is not possible with discretion or fundamental analysis or True. anything of that sort and believe me it's not only matching their performance it is actually beating their performance as well so True. 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 you have advantages of everything and disadvantages of everything i think advantages outweighs in in terms of systematic investments and trading and i would urge all your viewers to start looking at this path if they have not looked at it so far and start investing in equities do it systematically do it every time don't look try and time the market because i have if you have time i can show you that slide as well if you, what what happens if you try and time the market you actually <laughs> yeah, yeah. you actually so we'll put that slide into your description people can sure, go sure. to the presentation which actually tells you if you to unnecessary time the market in terms of entry and exit you actually reduces your return true and, true uh, true that is why doing nothing you no know, gives you more returns yeah, <laughs> with respect yeah. to this profession so there is a research that suggests that uh, people who have died has outperformed everybody else in terms of portfolio <laughs> performance so because they don't look at the <laughs> true 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 
thank you thank you so much for your and time thanks, rakesh thanks kiruba for having me and it was a pleasure talking to you and uh, i hope we keep keep on doing such conversation sure, for the benefit of larger audience and uh, we should frequently do this sometimes definitely. i will take your interview sometimes you take mine <laughs> and sure. probably we'll keep the ball rolling sure 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 thank you thank you so much rakesh thank, thanks yeah. thanks thanks